Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, part two on the spiritual armor thing. All right, now listen to this. I want you to hear Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses, hang on, let me check, 10 through 13. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God oh boy I'm going to go 14 as well for these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered or allowed thee to do so. Now listen. What he's saying is people who do that end up being taken, taken down. Mm-hmm. He said, for these nations without which thou shalt possess. In other words, people who do that are never going to be totally in control of their lives. There's always going to be something else taken over. They think they're going to be in control, but they're not. I'm not going to get into that. But listen, that shows you right there. When you say, well, where does it say in the Bible? That God doesn't want this, that, or the other. What's the big deal? I just talked to a medium. I just called a psychic. What's the big deal? I just play with a little tarot card once in a while. What's the big deal? I don't get it. Thou shalt not. Abomination. How much more do you have to hear? It's described just about all of it. Now, for those of you who want to argue that point, let me ask you one thing. Have you ever observed, oh, this is a trip. Have you ever observed roaches? Some of you are too, too affluent to have experienced such disgusting base things, but some of us have roaches as soon as you turn the light on the difference between a roach and a water bug a water bug is looking for some water he just la 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 roaches yeah they thrive in the dark you have light out you infested with roaches you turn that light on they take off like a bat out of hell. But guess what? You turn the light out. And they come tipping back out again. Because it's dark. And they move around. And they groove in the darkness. Just like demons and spiritual wickedness. It works best in the darkness. Now listen. When you deal with demonic forces, I have had, I'm going to talk from personal experience and some things I've heard from other people. Every dream, every demonic manifestation, whether awake or asleep, I have ever dealt with. Do you know it's always been in the dark? Never when the sun is shining bright. Hmm. The things of God, 
the manifestation of his love. He can show up in the light and the dark any time, morning, noon, or night. Why? Because he's free. His love is good. Everything about him is of integrity and, up, and uprightness. But things that dwell in darkness thrives on a lie. And you are believing it. You're expecting good out of evil. You're expecting sweetness out of bitterness. You're expecting integrity out of maliciousness and treachery. And you are mistaking being used and played and manipulated for love. Because your mind operates in the dark. You see, when you get into the light and God is, is forming you, reforming you and, and, and changing and shaping you and your eyes are becoming more and more accustomed to the brightness of his holiness, his righteousness, his love, his blessing, his presence, his glory. You find yourself loving the light and hating the darkness and anything associated with it. It becomes repulsive to you. And everything about light and beauty and, and integrity and holding all of that love and peace, joy, all of that just, just lights you up even more. You want more of it. But when you find yourself running from the saints running from born-again Christians, not wanting to be around folks at church, not wanting to go to church, not wanting to hear anybody quote the word. How dare they judge me? That means you desire the darkness. You move about like a roach in the darkness and you love everything that comes with it. And you're the ones that will call the mediums and consult with the dead. The dead. The dead. The demons, familiar spirits. Or you're the one that will call and make an appointment to get tarot card readings and astrology and times and seasons. And, uh -huh. Yeah. You won't go to God because you know that God is going to make you rise to a higher level. And you don't want that. You want it your way. I say to you, take a minute. If that is the way you feel, we are all still in a position to be helped. We all need help. We all need to grow. But you have to want to. Ask God to put a want to inside of you. Ask God to draw you close to him if he really is the best thing made since butter and, and, and cookies. I'm just being facetious. Ask God to help you see how much you need him. Excuse me. To help you see how much, how much beauty is in his love. How much life is worth living with him in it. How his light Helps you avoid pitfalls and tragedies in your life. Just from him having shown some light in it. And opened your eyes. Having opened your eyes so you could see what's really going on. Because see, God protects. He doesn't manipulate. He protects. You either want junky love and the darkness or you want true love and God's light. Your actions will tell you what you really want. God help you as you try to make that choice. 
and God protect you until you do.